Welcome to Link G4X Training Part 55. This training module, we're going to be exploring how to set up a Link CAN keypad with our G4X system. So we're going to learn how to go in and program all of the LED backlighting and using the various different keypad functions to tie into runtime values or for programming purposes in our G4X systems. We have a lot to cover. Let's jump in so we can check this out. Okay, so let's get started. We're going to be taking a look and working with setting up our CAN keypads with our Link G4X systems. Process is pretty straightforward. There's lots of programming options here. I'm gonna run through as many programming options as I can with setting up our Link CAN keypads. It does require you to have the latest software and firmware on your G4X to make this Link CAN keypad work. So make sure you've updated that before you head into the tutorial. Um, and also make sure that you check in the course library uh, go into the downloads folder for the training course. I've uploaded a new layout. We have our master layout. That's what we have available here on our screen. I actually have a new Canvas layout page here that you can follow along for this tutorial or setting up any Canvas uh, down the road. This is going to be new. I've just added it in. So um, as you're watching this, you're probably going to want to jump in and grab that layout so you can follow along a little bit closer. I just wanted to mention that. So you need to make sure you have new software, new firmware, and that new layout to take advantage of this tutorial. All right, let's jump in here and take a look at setting up and configuring our CAN keypad. There's again, lots of details that we need to cover. First thing we need to go and access the configuration settings so we can recognize the CAN keypad on our CAN network for the G4X box that we're working with. So in this case, I can access the CAN setup window from two locations. We can go up here to ECU controls and go down into CAN setup, or alternatively, we can just jump into our CAN bus window that I've created here, and then we can go to our little gear wrench icon, and we can click on this, and this will open up our CAN setup window. And here, we can start to program all of our details. Now, I'm working with a G4X Extreme Box right now, and I'm also working with a 12 uh, position 12 switch CAN keypad from Link. I'm trying to pair them together. Now, on my G4X Extreme Box, there's two CAN streams available. I'm only using one of the two CAN streams for this, and I have wired it into the B plug where the second CAN stream is located. Now, I need to make sure that I'm configuring that and pointing the CAN stream to the right CAN channel or stream. There's two available. I need to go here under the CAN configuration, CAN module and go here and point it to CAN2. If I've wired it in alternatively to CAN1, I'd be selecting CAN1. Now it's the note, depending on which Link G4X box you're working with, whether it's a plug and play application, so it's gonna be a, a drop and plug and play box, or it's gonna be a wire in box, you may have one or two CAN channels available. You have to pay attention to which CAN channel you're wiring into and making sure that you're selecting the correct CAN module here in your setup. And the next thing we need to do is go into our mode. And here, we want to select user defined when we're working with setting up a CAN keypad. We do have other options if we look all the way down here. These are going to be related to the OEM CAN networks. If we're trying to tie our G4X into that CAN network, these are going to be supported right in this drop down menu. In this case, we'll select user defined. The next option we have here is bitrate. Bitrate is going to be the communication speed on your CAN bus network, whatever the CAN network you're working with here is going to be either one or two. Now, what's important about this, all the devices that you're setting up on your CAN network, whether it's CAN 1 or CAN 2, have to have the same bit rate or communication speed. If you don't have them set the same, it'll cause problems and fault out on the CAN network and it may not work at all. So in this case, setting up our CAN keypad, we can run with the default right here of one megabit per second. If you're working with something like an ECU master's CAN keypad, those are set as a default of 500 kilobytes per second, so or kilobit per second, I should say. So it'll depend on what particular CAN keypad you're working with. The manufacturer of that CAN keypad should specify what your bit speed or bit rate is going to be. In this case, I can leave it here at one megabit per second. Now we also have here under OB, OBD, this is gonna be off for a CAN keypad. We do have these ISO options here for CAN1 or CAN2. This is going to be specific working with an OBD type of functionality for an OEM vehicle if you're integrating this. We don't need to check this on. We'll leave it off for right now. It's not going to apply for a CAN keypad. The next thing we need to do is jump down here under our data under channel. We have our different channels that we can work with. We can actually have 10 
different CAN devices on our network here. So we have our network one, network two. We can have 10 devices tied into our network two. And then if we clicked on CAN one, we could have 10 more devices on our CAN one. So we have a tremendous amount of data being transmitted on our CAN network independent of each other. In this case, I'm gonna go here to my data channel one. We're gonna go here and double click. We can see here on the mode is gonna allow us to select what we're gonna be doing with this particular channel. So on my channel one, on my CAN network two, I'm gonna go down here and look at my various options. We see here, we have our transmit user stream one all the way through 10. Then we have our transmit generic dash. We also have other dashes. So depending on what dash you're working with here, we have Microtech, we have dash two, we have the link strata dash. That's gonna be the link dash they sell, which is really nice, the TFT display dash. And then we have down here, the CAN keypads. We also have below that receiving user stream. So if you have something like uh, that's going to be sending and broadcasting information. Let's say it's an EGT module that's CAN via CAN network. You could have a receive. The transmit would be if we're sending data to something from the G4X. So we have our different options here. The CAN keypad is what we want to choose in this particular option. We also see all the way at the bottom of our list here, link CAN Lambda. It's going to be if you're running that link CAN Lambda module, which we're going to be talking about in another tutorial. Let's go here to our CAN keypad one, and we're going to select this. Now the transmit rate, this is going to be the frequency it's transmitting. This is going to be specific. We can have different transmission rates for the different devices we're working with, but remember the bit rate has to be the same between all of the modules. That's going to be very important. So the transmit rate here for a CAN keypad is going to be, if I'm taking a look down my list here, 10 hertz. That's going to be the frequency it's going to transmit at. Now the CAN ID, this is how it distinguishes, which distinguishes itself from all the other CAN modules on the CAN network. This ID is very specific and important. If we don't program this right, it won't recognize the CAN keypad when it's trying to pick this up. So if we're looking at this, this is going to be a CAN ID of 405 for a link CAN keypad. Now, if you're working with an ECU master's CAN keypad, this ID is going to be specified and it will be different. It's not going to be the same. Also, the transmit rate is likely to be different. And I know for a fact, the bit rate is going to be different and that's going to be defaulted at 500. Uh, kilobits per second. So in this case, we've set everything up here for the CAN keypad for link. There is a format, there's a normal. Thanks for checking out our teaser clip. If you want to see the rest of this video and more than 500 hours of current EFI training we have to offer, make sure you click right here. If you want to go and check out more teaser clips from this training course, click here. And you don't want to miss any of the videos we're going to be releasing on this channel. So make sure you subscribe and click here. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys later.